my goal is to try to get people who can't understand where we're coming from, where where, where you see what's going on in the world right now. I, I panicked a little bit. <laughs> hey, man, I'm thinking back, thinking back to the old days. But I was always ready to go. Anytime you show up to the party with this, it better be drinkable. Oh, there's that cinnamon. <laughs> Yo, what up? How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Men and Means Podcast. Back again. Here we are, man. Back at it, man, for your listening pleasure. Uh, ear orgasms is what we're here to provide, and I think we're doing a goddamn great job. Yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying the content. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so with that, man, as always, we're going to jump right into whiskey time here. Um, this week, I got something that I, I, I have been trying to get for a little while now. Uh, never, never got it before. But um, heard a lot about it. Uh, again, uh, I think we mentioned a couple episodes ago. If you guys uh, want to get some actual, like real, real whiskey um, information, some some good high grade uh, sommelier reviews and shit, uh, check out Whiskey Tribe. But this is one of their top rated ones, and this is called Ardbeg uh, Islay Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. This one's aged ten years. Um, coming straight out of Scotland, uh, the low, the southernmost. Uh, yeah, this this is the southern part. We we're used to like northern. Yeah, the Highland, Highland, right? yeah, uh, Scotch, this but is this southern. is southern, right? Um, and so here we go, man. As yeah. always, we jump right into the presentation. Age ten years as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mentioned that. So we uh, we got the uh, traditional bottle. Yeah, it's a, it's a little darker. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like green. Yeah. Which what we always thought like Irish whiskey yeah, was uh, green. I associated with that. Like your Jameson, your proper twelve. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, this one too, which is which is deceiving. We'll get into it in a little bit. Yeah. But it's very deceiving. It's very fucking deceiving. Um, but the bottle is a fairly traditional Scotch bottle. Um, slim, similar to a lot, even even the Buffalo Trace and stuff like that. Um, very interesting that you said that. We'll see later because I know ex- I think yeah, I know exactly you know, where you're you know going, where we're with, going that. with that. Yeah, but the, but, the, but these guys aren't there yet. So let's build a little anticipation, right? Well, you know, right. well, we'll <laughs> you'll get there when we want you to. Yeah, it's, it's working. It's working. But yeah, presentation. Uh, it's a nice bottle. It it has uh, established in 1815. Obviously, a lot of liquor's old, but like the the writing and everything, it kind of it looks. It yeah. looks like an old. It does even the A. It looks like like how they used to do like in the Bible. You know what right. I mean? Like the big, the big first letter, yeah. and then you know what I mean, going from there. Um, and you know when you grab that bottle right there, I noticed there's like a little uh, hole, if you will, in the bottle. Yeah. You know that's for a reason. I can't remember what that's there for now, but that's there. It's intentionally done like that. Okay. I forget what it is. Coming next episode, we'll tell you why that's there. Yeah, and, and and also you know the dark green bottles are there, the same similar to wine. You know what I mean to preserve it from the sun and keep you know what I mean the light from from in, impacting it so tough. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice bottle. I will say like the actual design of it is is cool. Um, I like the dark green, and that, it looks like a good bottle. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, like it's nothing too fancy, but yeah. you know sometimes too fancy is too much. Right. So I can appreciate it. Um, okay, so with that said, uh, let's let's give it a little smell there, man. Hello. Hello. And how are you? Doing pretty damn good. Well, before we before we talk about it, man, I want to say we did get some new glasses this week. Uh, shout out to my boy Travis, man. Shout uh, out. Yeah, he hooked us up with these high-grade um, whiskey glasses. And I'll just say, man, when he gave them to me, he, he made it clear. He said, this is going to change the game. And I was a little skeptical. I'm like, yeah. You know, I've heard a lot of things. You know, people say a lot of shit. So, James and I, we pour it up, man, and uh, we, we do the nosability here. And James, what do you think? Well, I, I'll, I'll just say this. When he first handed me this glass, it's like, it's the least amount of glass you could ever get in, in a glass. Yeah. It, it's very, it's, it was super light, and it was just like, I don't know if you guys can tell, but like, almost like where the liquor goes in, it's kind of like suspended in there. So, it's, it's double walled. It's double walled, but right. it, it's just very like. It's like it's like a wine flute, right, almost, right? Right, right, right. Um, but using these, he wasn't lying. It really it does change the game because apparently it opens up the nose ability, so you can get in there and smell it. Because you can you smell this, and compared to every single other liquor that we've smelled, it it neutralizes that whole alcohol smell. Like the harsh, yeah, yeah like the, the harsh yeah. whiskey smell. It neutralizes that, and. I was talking to Ken earlier. We're not 
we kind of we enjoy some of some of the the whiskeys that we try that have that that little punch to them and, and the 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 nose ability but um it, it, i just feel like we're starting from scratch and you know shout yeah. out to travis on that because i think this is gonna allow us to really get a sense of what the fuck we're doing here in terms of smelling this stuff now the taste of it we're going to get into right now um, but first we want to i want to point out the fact that this this is super this is a very light whiskey yeah uh yeah what's just so like i said i hinted towards earlier um it, it, it leaves you for a surprise with the the dark bottle um it comes out it looks damn near like a like a chardonnay or something you know what yeah. i'm saying like it's it's very light um colored but and um, be, being thorough oh, like yeah. we like we are we were curious because like i said we we've done this for 20 something episodes now right, and, right. and and this has been the first time we've we've really experienced it but you know i don't know if you guys again i don't know if you guys can see it firsthand but it's almost like there's water in this cup this this is one of the most light whiskeys i've ever seen and i think that's why we brought up the the, the bottle so dark is because that whiskey is yeah you couldn't put this in a regular bottle it would look it would look super light yeah yeah it looked like you got tequila in there it does look like tequila. Yeah. You know, so. A respato. Yeah. But it's Blanco. not. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My bad. Yeah, right. <laughs> Man, I'm, you know, I'm trying to, I'm dabbling tequila too much, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway, man, so breathability, especially while using these glasses. Um, well, let me just jump back into presentation. So the, the presentation, I think, like I said, is a tad deceiving. And then you see it, and whenever I see that super light, I always think, oh, this is going to be smooth. You know what I mean? And and this is the lightest that I've seen. So um, so there's that part of the presentation, but the nosability, man, it, it's it's very smooth. Uh, I think in, probably in large parts of these particular glasses here. However, man, you really get you get that char, that smoky flavor in there, that scent um, going on. Yeah, it, you definitely... T- it- the smokiness is there for sure that and that to me is the biggest factor here it's not it's not the cask it's not the liquor flavor is removed and what i'm getting is a lot of smoke we talked about it a little bit a while ago and it kind of smells like a campfire it does you know yeah. and it honestly makes me feel like i'm gonna go home and be like man my clothes uh smell smoky you know what i mean um and we're smoking cigars so they may but um, but no, you know, if, if you've ever sat at like a campfire, man, you know, that smell, you know, that like when you, when you remove yourself from that setting and you get, you know, at home and you're like, Oh shit, I can smell this on my clothes still. That's the smell. It makes you, it kind of takes you there. It makes you feel like that's where you're at. Um, it really kind of just paints that setting for you if you would, which is nice. I, I, I not opposed to that. It'd be yeah. nice to have this at a campfire. It's nice that it could take you there. Yeah. Sometimes you get liquor that it has a smoky smell to it, but it, it's not, it doesn't take you there. Right. You just smell the char. This one kind of takes you a place. It takes you to that, to that campground yeah, yeah. or that backyard that, you know, you're burning some wood in the backyard. Right. Uh, it takes you there for sure. So I'm very curious, man. I want to see if, if the, if on the palate, if it, if it does the same. Right. And I'm scared to hit these together. Yeah. Let's not. Let's it's just real give it, thin. Let's get a little air. Ooh. Let, let's oh, just, let's okay. just see if we get a little. Yeah, there we, we go. We'll go. We'll go gentle. We're gonna on do it. it. Yeah. yeah. Fuck it. I'm gonna say, man, it it does hit you with a little spice. It's a little peppery, but you definitely on the on the back end, man. You you get that smoky charred, like that that almost like a, a barbecue kind of flavor, if you would, man. Yeah. Which is. It's yeah. interesting. Yeah, th- this one it, it kind of numbs the tongue out real quick with that with that little smoky flavor, and then like he said, it really opens up on the back end. And I don't know if it's the glass or not, right? But it really does open up the back end to have the flavor just keeps going. Because you know, I mean, you know, when you see somebody take like shots or something, you see them plug their nose, right? Because obviously, when you're sm- when you that smell plays a role in in your brain as well. You know, all of the all your receptors are, are firing off. But this kind of diverts that real harsh alcohol smell away from you, and so I think the back end comes in real strong because because you, 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 that that aspect's removed from it. Uh, at least that's my my take on it. Who who am I? You know what I mean. But and I kind of feel like with these new glasses, we, it's changed the game for us. Yeah, I kind of feel like you can put 
Like, let's just say we went. What's the worst whiskey we've tried on here? Uh, B- B- Buchanan's. Buchanan's. James Buchanan, right? <laughs> yeah, do that guy. Uh, James Buchanan was the worst whiskey the that we've had on I've here. Had, it yeah. was, and next to that was uh, Hibiki. Yeah, Japanese I, whiskey. I don't like but I wonder, either. like, if we put it in this cup, is it going to change it? We will find out. Well, we'll let you guys know. know. Yeah. Because I'm curious now to yeah. to, to get yeah. more into the game of tasting whiskeys and trying this because to get a greater understanding, right? And and what what kind of what are the tools of the trade? Right, right? people always say you need the right tool for the job. And this is it. Perhaps hey, Travis. It. When Travis gave me these, he said, "Hey man, I'm going to tell you, this is going to change the game." Yeah. Job well done, Travis. You see, this this is really beneficial for whiskey time. Yeah. To give you guys the full like flavor and smell of everything. And, and Ray's gift here. Oh yeah, it, it's it, it's it get you in the pocket. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know and, what I mean. And Ray's Ray's that's a deep pocket right there. <laughs> yeah, like we brought it up last time. This is, <laughs> yeah, it's dude, a deep pocket. Like, yeah, I'm like half the bottles in this damn glass, man, and I'm not mad at it. Yeah, this is this is good. But you know, you mentioned something, man. Um, in in the pocket, and I I, I want to just give you guys. I think James and I want to kind of make sure we explain to you um For the exactly time. exactly what in the pocket is. And so for for me and James here. This is something we kind of uh, a term we coined um, when you're you're out drinking. You want to get you want to get a nice. You don't want to be sober, but you don't want to be. I'm falling down. This is that nice middle ground, middle of the road, as James likes to say. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm uh, here's sobriety on one side. Here's drunk on this side. I'm here in the middle. I'm having a great time. I'm aware of everything. I know what's going on. I, I'm not. I don't feel bad. I feel good. Um, that uh the cure uh for an uh un god damn it i forget what it is I- i'll bring it up later i can't think of it right now but you know the the way he put it was perfect because <laughs> yeah. me and ken always talk about it. people are like oh what's in the pocket what's in the pocket he said he earlier he just said perfectly drunk yeah. perfectly drunk was a was a great way to put it because you you don't like it's a it's a point where you're riding the wave and you're like i'll, I'll take another yeah i'm good for another right and and you've already opened up and look at alcohol is your is your best friend when you're using it responsibly and when you're in the pocket you were just firing on all cylinders and you were just having a great time and you're enjoying yourself most importantly but in the pocket that's what it is it's it's yeah. just enjoying that perfect spot what's that you're not you know you see a lot of times man people get too drunk and then they're like all super emotional and you know whatever and all the problems have rushed back into your world it's that I, whatever, whatever, I got nothing pressing me. You nothing, know what I mean? Pressing Nothing's me. pressing me. I'm having a blast right now. I'm living in the moment. I'm in the pocket. And there you go. Yeah, that's in the pocket for you that's guys. That's the definition of in the pocket. For the fourth time. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll do this periodically yeah. just so you guys. I mean, people jump in later. You yeah. know what I mean? We'll make sure everyone's up to date, up to speed. Yeah. Um, but then we'll, we'll, we'll resume our whiskey time here, man. And so with that said. Um, we've talked about presentation. We talked about the nose. We talked about the palate. Um, I think that's going to bring us. Well, let's mention the price point here. This particular bottle here was about sixty nine dollars, and ain't nobody mad at that. So all of those factors in place, man. Um, this is where we give you guys our rating, and I'm gonna be a little unorthodox, man. I'm say, James, man, why don't you? Why don't you tell me where you, you know what, I'll go first. Uh, I got it. My bad. <laughs> All right. Um, so these glasses, man, make it really kind of kind of tough. It's a game changer, like yeah, you said. Yeah, it's because it's, this, I have nothing to compare it to out of, the, out of a similar glass. So um, with that said, I will keep that in mind for my rating. Um, presentation, I like the green bottle. Um, I can respect that. It's, it's, it's classic, but I do like the calligraphy they used. It, it's nice. Um, it's artsy. It looks it looks good. There's some cursive on there, uh, and I would say it gives you good information on the front of the bottle about what you're actually getting. Again, this is an ILA single single malt Scotch whiskey, um, which I've heard nothing but good things about. And at coming in at 46 percent alcohol, I gotta say too, man, that plays a role in the idea of 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 how drinkable it is. All of those factors, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna go eight. I'm gonna give it an eight. Okay. So we got an eight here, and I will say that it's nice to get a scotch back in the game right here from it the is. southern part of it Scotland. Uh, so I'm I'm happy about that. The glasses kind of open, opened it up for me. Just it, It's a new experience. So 
I hope you guys are, are trying some of these things that we're doing, rec- like trying some of these whiskeys we're recommending. But if you can, try to get one of these and maybe pour up with us, you know, when you guys get a chance. Um, try it out in this because it kind of opened my eyes to everything a little bit more. And I'm excited for the for the whiskeys to come and also to revisit some maybe in our mm-hmm. personal time in one of these glasses and see if things change. But for me, I'm going to give this whiskey here a 7.5. I'm going to give it a 7.5 for the same similar reasons. Um, 46% seems to be a great number to get in the pocket. Uh, it's not, it's, you know, it's not too weak. It's not too strong. It's not going to put you there too quick. The, the smells take me somewhere. So that's a huge part of it to, to bring me there. And then the actual flavor of the whiskey to be like in this cup and to drink it and have the flavor kind of roll to the back end of it and get better and and also i kind of like that smoky flavor to the point where it numbs my tongue a little bit i i've always been intrigued with drinks that can kind of put you through it like a sensation something yeah. like that right so you can enjoy this a different way it's not just to oh let me get this down so i'll, I'll give it a 7.5 and i want to say that's one of my higher ratings yeah for for and the price point's great you know yeah, you can't not, really it's, beat that it's not the cheapest thing i've had but for considering what it is um it is a pretty reasonable price and so that's a 7.75 um average score there um seven and three quarters if you would um so you know what man that's definitely not a bad rating whatsoever and i've also noticed james i'm always rating it much higher or higher than you and and, you know next time you go first man okay i I feel like it's easy to go second like oh yeah i'm too high you know what i mean no, 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 no. This I, is my, me being weird. I, I don't want to say that you're rating it too high. I would just say that for me, and this is why we do whiskey time, guys. This is a perfect example of why we do whiskey time. So for when you have tried these whiskeys after we review them, and you're like, hey, I kind of feel like Ken felt. I kind of love this shit. Yeah. James was kind of like, uh, you know, some of the other ones. Right. And maybe you identify more with my flavors and you can go off the recommendations a little differently. So you can kind of gauge it. It is two different perspectives. Right. You know, so for me, a whiskey that ranks high for me, it's got to do a couple of different things for me. Like, it's got to put a smile on my face. I got It's got to bring a level of excitement. You know, I, that's just me. But yeah, I, I'll, go, I'll go first next time. Okay. I, you know, I'm still going to rate it the same shit. I, I'm actually a tough grader, I think. Yeah, I know. And I'm, I think. I don't think around, you're a weak grader. No, I, I think I probably. I, I'm, I'm like, oh, yeah, they tried hard. You know what I mean? I'm like, give everyone a trophy. You know what I'm saying? So. you, I think you gave yeah. one rating that was, to yeah. me, a little high. Do you remember what it was? Oh, man. I remember, I remember one, like, I, I rated it, and yours was, I was like, wow, damn. It might have been Virginia. I like that one. I, I, think I, I like that one. I think one. you gave it an eight. I give it a, yeah I can see that and I I I don't take that back I I felt like I I actually did like it and on top of that I thought fuck man for for it being a smaller thing and it being blended the way it was and doing something outside of the box than what I normally see I was I was like man I give him some love yeah that was, that was a good collaboration for sure yeah so you know I I respect it so anyway man I think that's gonna conclude our whiskey time there um hope you guys enjoyed it um so moving on. Moving on forward, um, you know what too. So as I mentioned, we got a gift from uh, my, my my boy Travis, man. But I we got another gift this week um, from someone I know who sent me a box, two boxes of items, um, which was really cool. I got a ukulele, I got a like a little set of like little bongo drums, and um, and I don't know what the hell to call the other thing. I'll be honest with you, don't know what it is. Don't know what it's called. Yeah, I don't know the name of that either. Um, but it's pretty cool. I was actually playing. I was playing with it today. I was like, man, that seems kind of cool, dude. It's like <laughs> my favorite one. And then, and then I got another box, and it came. It was just a bunch of albums, and then a, like a uh, a list of what those albums were and their historical significance, um, which was really cool. You know what I mean? I was I was really in, intrigued by that. And this is uh, from somebody that James and I both know. Um, to one. You know, like I said, we both know. Right. Uh, and I'll give it, I'll give it a little more. Yeah, go for it. That that person, um, and we won't we won't mention names or anything like that. But that that person happened to be my first mentor. Happened to be the one that kind of 
edged me along and and told edged you along. Ed, <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, mentor. Huh? <laughs> kind of, you know, like sometimes sometimes you meet people and they 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 tell you things that make you see yourself bigger than what you are, just to become that. And get, it's not saying yeah. that you are. It's to say you, you gotta you gotta buy in. They get you to buy into yourself a little bit, right? And I and I will say that one time we went to and I was I was kind of unsure about what I was bringing to the table, right? Because this person is substantially more successful in life than me, right? At the time, still is. Um, but yeah, even kind, in retirement, yeah, you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean. Like, and I remember going to lunch with her, and we didn't touch any of the fucking food. And for me, I was like, wow. Like I'll eat later because yeah. we're talking. Like so, this person is someone I I really respect, and the fact that they would send gifts. That I mean, just, years after they stopped working with us, year, years, and, you know, and, and every year you get a little, little birthday card, you get a little birthday card, yeah. and she's she just been someone who, early on, um, just really, just impressed me with who she was. Yeah, you know, and yeah. huge thank you for that gift. That was amazing. I, and, I it's amazing. And I want to just mention this, the way, so it comes with a little letter. And the letter was almost like, it was addressed to me, which was cool. Um, and I can appreciate that. And the letter was written like to me, but to all, uh, even Anthony, man, to all three of us, as we all come from the same place, right? But uh, almost a letter of like in code, you know what I mean? Like, hey, I'm not going to tell you who I am, but you should be able to figure it out. Yeah. And then, and like, so I figured it out and then I leave it in, in James's uh, on his desk and he comes in and I go, hey, do you know who gave it to us? And immediately he knows. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we all knew immediately. And I was like, man, isn't that some cool, something cool right there? Yeah. Um, I got to be honest with you, man. It's a little sometimes intimidating to know someone like that and someone of that stature is listening, has listened to what we do. Yeah. Um, especially uh, me and the, the things I talk about. One of the questions James asked me last week, I'd be a little embarrassed to have her I hear that, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you know what i mean but i will say that if you do happen to listen again or anybody that you know that can push this along to you there there was one line in the letter yeah that <laughs> it made sense when you read it but to to try to comprehend it was like a riddle yeah and it yeah. was like how do you interpret this and we could all interpret this differently but there was one line in there if 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 you ever want to reach out please there there's one line in there that we just kind of we want a little more yeah. a little more perspective on that but we it was great because it was like you said it was kind of it was just analyzing what we're doing here and it was kind of cool to know that she was doing that yeah and it came with like a like the front uh i don't know it's like a piece of paper in there and it had a quote on it but basically the quote is just kind of talking about um someone standing on a giant's shoulders can see further than the giant you know what i mean or someone, something that I, I feel like I'm blending this with a Jay Z line because Jay Z says, says the same shit. You know what I'm saying? So, um, uh, who said the quote? Fuck, I can't remember who it was even. It's like somebody real. This is in my world, man. I'm not that well read. You know what yeah. I mean? But, but I was like, yeah, you know, man. I, again, it's just you know, support people. You know, something like that. And and like James mentioned too, you know, somebody that kind of takes their time and kind of can encourage you and get you to see the better in you, which I think is something that James and myself both try to do pretty frequently. You know what I mean? Like if I see somebody down, I, I want to try to build you up. And I, I don't always, and I've knocked people down in my life. I, I, I'm no saint, you know what I mean? I definitely have. But I, I, I do put a lot of thought into those situations and I want to get better. And I think James and himself would probably agree getting better is the goal every single day. Right. And I think that should be. I actually work with a guy, and and I tell him it reminds me of the Kobe Bryant commercial with Kanye West, and he's like, you know, you, you got to get better. He's like, well, what's better than better? Better, some shit like that. You know what I mean? And Kanye's like, what the fuck are you talking about, Kobe Bryant? You know what I'm saying? But uh, the point, though, man, I think is, man, you got to have that Mamba mentality, that fourth quarter. You know what I mean? Balls in my hand, I, and I'm about to kill the game. And I think, you know. Things lost along, uh, lost uh, among a lot of people. I think people think that they are, but are you really? Even myself, I question it a lot. Like, man, I could have done better. I could do more. What? How could I have? How could have today have been more successful? And and when I think of that, I think like you know, I'm comparing myself to my peers. So James being one of those people, I'm constantly like, damn, you know, this guy 
seems to uh, it reminds me man i listened to another podcast today with uh joe rogan and ron white um and i would encourage you guys to check it out joe rogan's obviously really good at what he does yeah <laughs> but um and ron white just kept telling him like i i can't believe the energy you have like how do you how do you do this and uh you know he's just and then ron white's like do you ever sleep and he's like i sleep all the time like that's how i do it i always like i sleep and then during the, the hours I have, I just decide to make the most. And then you look at Ron White, who's much more like me, and he's like, <laughs> yeah, well, I, I cut back on drinking half a bottle now. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm like, yeah. But um, it reminded me of a quote, which I'd like to bring up, and it was like, seek the path of most resistance because it's, it's the path that forces you to grow. And James, why don't you go ahead and tell me who I got that from? Well, embarrassingly enough he got that from me i did um it, and i i'm not saying i came up with it i just where i'm at today it just seemed kind of relevant to what i'm looking for i'm looking for the path of most resistance and i think that the mentality of of, of wanting things to come easy like i like i said before things will come easy in life and and situations will come easy career will come extremely easy for some individuals and harder for others but I think that when you look for the, the hardest path that you can possibly go through, you're forced to look at the things that you're not great at, the weaknesses that you have. And it gives you an opportunity. And I, and I don't know how many people out of 10 would take the hard road. Yeah, the hard road. Yeah. Or, or even look at their weakness and say, like, fuck, yeah. I need to get better here. Otherwise, I will get through this, but I won't get but better. I won't be the best that I could have. Right. right. So that that's kind of where I, I want to encourage people to do that. I, I want them to to want the path the most resistance and take the challenge and be challenged and understand where they stand. Because I think it also, if nothing else, the most difficult things that I've done, and even even in my career, I've been challenged by people. I've been challenged by people, and when you, and when you come out the other side and you are you're more confident you're more equipped to handle challenges and right. you can't do that if if it's the least resistance and i know that some things in life it should be you should look for for the path of least resistance but for me in most of what people want to obtain and and they want to progress especially when you talk about work or anything like that work fitness anything like that you got to want the shit to 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 make you uncomfortable you, you especially you mentioned fitness and i think one of the things that you hear about, and obviously, man, I'm no, no fucking guy to really rely on for that aspect, but one of the things you hear about is you have to go till failure, right? Like, that's how you're going to get gains. You have to work until failure. And, and, and so that basically means you have to push yourself to the greatest extent you can. You know what I mean? And then that's how you're going to get better at it. And if you don't, you won't. If you go and you're like, oh, it's a little tough, I'm done. Then, then you will get nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean, and and so I saw that today, and I was really impressed by it. But it also it, it made me something I saw on, on my own a little while before. I heard, uh, and I've heard it before, but it really kind of resonated uh, not too long ago. But it was, uh, if you're not shooting too high, you're shooting too low, and that's my boy Jay Cole, that's right? Jay Cole. Like if you're not shooting too high, then you because aim too because low. like if if. If your goal isn't something, your goal should basically be insurmountable. Like you should like, it, it, I can't get to that goal. I said here on here before, my goal is to be perfect every day. I think I said on here, but it is. It's to be perfect and I will fail every single day, but that's okay because the outcome is, 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 is okay if you fail at it as long as your goal is to get to that level. You know what I mean? It should be and I'm far from it. I, I mean... But but in, in having that ideology behind it, it makes me seek to get better every day. We'll take that back to the beginning. I do want and the desire is there and I'm willing to try to get better at something every day. And you, if you failure is a part of life. Yeah. And, and something you touched upon, man, is, is I think some people do like, hey, I'm going to wait till something's handed to me. And that's great. If it works out, great. But they, you will never know your potential. Right. You will never know what you could have been. Like you said, in times when you didn't know, somebody kind of talked to you and was like, hey, look at this. Look what you've done here. Look what you could do. Mm -hmm. And then when you start doing it, you start looking back like, damn. I, yeah, at one point I was there. Look, look how much greater I've gotten at this. Yeah. Or, you know, and, and then 
you, but that can't be your that can't be your cap. You have to look further than that and continue to keep going. So, right. and, and not only that, but when when you do take the path of of most resistance, it's funny because, like, if you take me in my fitness journey, I, I seek this shit daily, almost right. But it doesn't matter because when, when Ken is trying to be perfect, his goals are high. There's a, like there's relatability there. There's there's right. a factor that you can you can find those individuals that that you can all of a sudden you're in a different league. And it's funny because it doesn't have to be the same fucking thing you're doing, but all of a sudden he understands what you're talking about yeah. and it elevates you. And yeah. that's that's the biggest thing. You gotta understand who who's with you and who's elevating in different ways. Ken Ken can tell me right now, hey, I'm starting a fucking clothing line and it's gonna be the biggest clothing line ever. And I can be like, man, I want I want to get my fitness game going. And all of a sudden, we relate because we both want these goals that are higher than you can imagine. This ambition comes in. Yeah, the ambition comes in, and all of a sudden, it's you're just mingling with different individuals that really push you up. And that's that's why I'm saying like you gotta, and and you said it perfectly. J Cole said it perfectly. If you don't aim too high, then you're aiming too low. Right. And and I'm all I'm all about. Like, and I, I will be honest with you, man. Sometimes you you face a challenge. I had, I had, so you mentioned like a mentor and here's someone that, somebody that I kind of viewed as a mentor kind of said to me one day, pulls me to the side and he's kind of like, Hey, uh, you know, uh, I, I noticed when you, you can knock out easy things better than a lot of people, but, but, but he's like, and maybe they're tough to them, but you knock them out. But when you get with something and you, you hit like a f firm, like obstacle in front of you you kind of like hey well i got to that point and then you back off of it and i was like you know what i'm not gonna argue that that's a fair point because that one seems and so i'm like i have all these things on my plate so i have 10 things on my plate eight of them i can knock out tomorrow but those last two those are the ones that take some real you got to really you know persevere through it and i'll tend to like i threw i threw my shot at it didn't land all right you know and then and him telling me that though again was an eye-opener and was like okay instead of running away from those run at those like the easy ones who cares I, I, if you if you if i took 10 days and i accomplished the two big ones that's better and then and then once those are done it's, it's just, oh you, you need those done yeah i'll knock those out today Cake. yeah you know give me 20 minutes they're yeah. done but you have to, and, and I think that's why you have to be open to hearing people's feedback about that. And it's okay. Right. You can be offended by it. I, I deal with people now uh, are in all aspects of life, and I think people get offended when you kind of point out kind of like a shortcoming. You know what I mean? And, and it's like and I'm only pointing it out because I think you can do it. If I really thought like it was above you, I'd be like, oh, I'll just give that to someone else or someone else right. or I'll do it or something like that. But right. um. So I, you know, I don't know that I, I was happy to see that you did that. And that was something I was like, man, you know what? And, and to be fair, I, I see James and I, and I do, I think he is a man of principle and a man of, uh, of, of what he stands for, what he stands for, which I respect every day. Right. But also I think, um, a, a guy though, that because of his principles and stuff, wouldn't run away from something because it was hard. And and there you go. So if he if he's like, hey, I'm I'm done with this, it wasn't because it was hard. No, not at all. He he'd continue, and it probably would be fairly easy for him once he's got going on it. Yeah, and I want to give one more shout out to the person who sent us the gift because, and this is for and just because you were saying like, okay, when when things when you get things pointed out to you and you gotta you gotta rise to the occasion, you gotta be a little better at it. I, I want you to know that every time you don't face a challenge you lower someone's expectations of you oh yeah and that and that's a no-no that that to me is like no if you're telling me i gotta get better because you need to expect that from me and i will say for everybody who thinks that they're doing something that's below them take the challenges but i will say this for the person who was that sent us the gifts i remember in my lowest position at my job that i was in i i, I, w I went and talked to her I didn't talk to her because I thought she could help me. I didn't want help. But I told her, this is what I'm struggling with. And she looked at me and she said, look it, what this position provides you is an opportunity to think. It, it's your time to think, formulate, and do it. And I left that meeting 
and I went and I wrote 10, 15 things that I wanted to personally accomplish that were for the company. Not for me, but for the company that said, okay, because back then you had to have these projects. Yeah. You had to have these yeah. things, right? And I, in my head, I thought, what better to think of than, than projects for myself? Who's, who better to appoint them than me? What do I see? What do I see broken? Yeah. So I went and I fucking, I, I learned all the things that I can improve upon, but it, it came from being in that position that I knew I was too low. It was too low for me, but to have somebody tell me like, take the time to think, cause you may never get the opportunity to sit there and think how you want to attack this. And I want to give a huge thank you for that because that led me to so much more. And I'm not saying right. I accomplished the world there, but I will say I accomplished the things that I've wanted to accomplish and there. I think I think it showed, I think throughout, for me knowing you from that period to this period now, I think it showed you what you could do, whether, whether it was in that capacity or in another, I think it showed you, hey, if I, if I take my time and I plan things out, I can get them done. And uh, yeah, like I said, man, that, that's impressive to me. Um, and, and I mean, to that point too, man, I would say even, even more to that point, I think, yeah, I, you know, I, I often say too, like people say like, Oh yeah, you know, that sucks over there. And I'm like, okay, well, what do we do about it? Oh, I don't know. Well then what good is that? You know what I mean? Like I would say too, man, like if, if you ever, whatever, in any aspect of life too, if you come across a problem, don't just point out the problem. If you try to try to formulate a solution to it even if you're wrong who gives a fuck you know what i mean be wrong but at least at least you at least you're offering something up imagine the person you're saying it to will probably say hey like yeah that's that's an idea but it won't work because of this so let me let's work on something together and then now you you're gaining more knowledge on how to be better at it and and, and run with it but then there you go you know what I mean? And now you're learning something and you're getting better. And um, that's what, to me, that's the goal in life, man. Is this in any aspect? Like, here we are in this podcast. So I'll relate it back to this. I was telling James, I think, man, we've gotten a lot better from the day we started. Neither one of us think, oh, man, we have, we're there. We're the Absolutely no, no. no. And, and, and I don't think we would ever feel that way, no matter how, I don't care if I woke up tomorrow and I was like, oh, my God, we got 100 million fucking subscribers. I would think, how can I get better? Yeah, that and Ryan, I, I think you'd be the same. Yep, that's the goal. It, it, it numbers and things like that wouldn't define my success. Right. You know what I mean? Like right. I would define my success, and and me, I'm always like, but I can get. And I think the the most the, the most successful people seem to take that approach. You know, like if you if you look at like a basketball player, it's not like oh, I won a championship, I'm done. No. <laughs> yeah. you're like no dude that's not how it works you've yeah. reached the highest level of success you can have in your field but they weren't done because it, to them that what they'll watch the tape or something and be like okay i could get better i'm gonna get better i'm gonna yeah. get better lebron in his 17th season is probably playing better than he ever has before you know what i mean and and, and kobe too late in his career's final game 60 points yeah that says a lot. You know what I mean? These guys understood that. Like, if I'm going to go out, I'm going to go out. I want to go out with what I think. I want to give everything I have, and that's how I'll do it. Yeah. You, you always got to you always gotta get better. And that's, like you said, the numbers don't define that. It comes down to how you want to perform every day. It's, it's, every, your, it's an everyday your, thing. Your personal perspective on yeah, it. Yeah, be, because the, the championships and, and the things that you do, yeah, they they make you a champion, but how you go every day trying to uphold and chase it still, that makes you that person. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And I mean, we we learn so much through through people like our mentors. We learn so much through people like Kobe. You know what I mean? Like uh, you just learn. You got to have that. You got everybody's got to have something. If not, like. If you're if you're okay being like that sheep, you know, yeah. like if you're okay with it, I'm not I'm not talking shit, but but just understand that's your role. Well, yeah. that's your role in a company, well, that's your role in society. I, which I think is essential. Yeah, okay, as yeah. fucked up as it might be, yeah. but if you are playing into a role of of a of a capitalist society and what is essential to that. Which I mean, I think even myself currently, yeah, sure. I you I play a role in that in somebody's somebody else's dream. 
right? Right. And that's okay. I mean, these are times that we live in. You kind of, you don't have to, but, but again, I think here I am trying to make something for myself, right? Yeah. So at least the, the, the desire is there. And, right. and, and then, and then I think, you know, something I was thinking about too is like, and what do you do with that? So, and I was talking to James one day and he was telling me, he was kind of like, well, how do you, I said I wanted to do something. I don't recall what it was. I always say I want to do something. <laughs> but he immediately was like, okay, well, how do you get there? What are you doing to get there? Set the small goals, start accomplishing those. And then before you know it, you're like, shit, I, I hit ready. the big goal. I'm ready. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like I'm here now. Um, which kind of one makes me want to ask you, James, like, um, what do you, what do you see it that for yourself, that's your best quality? What? My best quality? Yeah. Would in your own opinion. So look, before you answer, let me say this. So I want to ask you and then I want to tell you what I think if that's okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> so, so you want me to answer then you yeah. want to tell me i want you to answer and then i'll see if i agree with you from what i know about you but i mean no one knows you like you well I, i'll say that for my i guess my personal goals my personal goals are maybe they're maybe they're uh they're ambitious i definitely have goals that are bigger than i could have ever imagined growing up mm -hmm. you know just to be independent and and like a business owner and all that stuff but I think I think my best quality has to be if I had to pick one I think I I think I got a lot of good qualities. I agree. But I will say that my my probably my best quality is I have I have the ability to to influence people in yeah. in outcomes and situations and I think that that's one of my best ones. And I think that when I pair that with my logic and my strategic approach at things I think that's a winning combination. So I think I have, I, I guess my best quality is I have tools that allow me to accomplish anything I want in life. But I have to learn how to to handle these tools, how to use them, how to take a risk, how to jump how to out of, that power. yeah, cause, yeah, you know, because in my in my life, I was always taught like work hard, do this, do that. Yeah, I got work ethic, but what I need to do is I need to learn how to step outside of that. For for my goals, you really? know. Okay. You know, so I think my best quality, I guess, to answer your question would be it just I got I got a lot of the, tools that can make me successful. The power of influence. Power of influence paired with the ability to with the logic. With, with the, the logic way, with of the ability process. to see a bigger picture and then influence others to kind of guide them to where that bigger picture takes them. Right. Okay. I I, I absolutely agree that you have those qualities. And, and I absolutely do. And I will attribute this back to uh, my ex's brother and l talking to him. And he was one of my mentors too. We talked a lot about how sometimes in life you're a visionary, but you couldn't do this shit alone. And you couldn't do this shit without help and influence and, and to get things done. And I've met people that, yeah, they're successful, but they had to have people to drive their vision forward. So I would say that my influence is is kind of related to that. I have I have dreams, I have goals and everything and my influence can get those to happen, but I I need to learn how to navigate that and to put myself in a position where my influence drives me forward. Yeah. Um I think uh it kind of ties back into what we were saying like most people I think work for someone else and your role at least is essential for them that organization to be where they where they're trying to be um so yes I, th I think yeah you're right you need to be able to have some sort of influence and i think you you are pretty pretty good at it um now i might me personally i think what you said that you your work ethic but i would say your drive your drive and and the the, the drive not only to get a job done but to do it as good as possible like to to the best possible outcome that you can do is what i think for example, this table we're sitting on. I was here when you were building it. And I'm kind of like, oh, yeah, it'll be good. And you're like, nah, let's do this again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. And I'm like, you know what? And like, even sitting there that day, I thought I learned something. Like, no, you're right. If you're going to do it, give it your all. You know what I mean? Like, really try. And so I think, I think that plays into why you can be influential, in my opinion, right? Like, if you, if you weren't that, I wouldn't look at it like I'd like yeah whatever man we're 
I could do the same shit. You know what I mean? Like I could have, yeah. But because of the fact that I think, and this is kind of like, again, like I, I, I relate it back to, let's say, Kobe Bryant. It's, it's, it's not, it's not because he, to me, it wasn't like, oh, he's the first one in the gym. Yeah. But why? Because he wanted to be as good at it as he could. You could be the first one in the gym and then like not really do shit, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> okay, you know, no You're early bird. Yeah. Like, and great great i i know people i've worked with in my history and they were like always like at work way early and just sitting there but i'm like but you're not good at your job you know what i mean like i don't care great what does that matter dude like you didn't do anything better than anyone else you were just here first yeah. like so i think i think pairing all of those together is, is 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 that would be my my opinion on the matter yeah i don't know how you feel about that but that's my take on it well no i i feel i feel good about it you know what's funny is you have drive and it's for me i always want to i want things perfect yeah i know and i'm not a micromanager either i will i will send you on a perfect task yeah you know what i mean so I, like i tend to micromanage you know so <laughs> yeah. like i i have an expectation but my my drive is a lot of it comes from like no i'll, I'll do everything yeah you yeah. know and, and it's like i'm so reluctant to like break shit off sometimes because i'm just like it's hard I want, to delegate. Yeah, well, not so much. It's hard to delegate. I want to. I want to learn, and I want to be good at it before I delegate. So and that's I, my big. thing. Let me ask you this, then. So let's say there's a task, and you know, like it's you know it already. You know, you know it. However, you know, maybe it's difficult to trust someone else with it because you know their level of competency. How do you manage that? Well, how I manage that is if I know it already, that's where I formulate my expectations. I don't I don't ask anybody to do anything unless I know what the level of expectation is. Fair. So I'll I'll send you off, but then there's I'll explain to you exactly yeah. what I want back. And and if you don't get that. When I don't get that, yeah. Then um number one, I'm I'm kind of upset. Right. Number two, now I gotta look at where you failed. And how to get you to a point where you won't hit failure there. Now, does that does that start to be micromanaging? No, because I'll let you fail. Well, I'd let somebody fail, too, depending on the task. And I wouldn't give somebody a task that was, like, that impactful if I, I, didn't, if I wasn't 100% confident you could do it. Yeah. No, I, I'm, so, I'm so, like, I got so much shit going on in my head that when I send you off thinking, like, you're going to handle it the way I asked you to. I won't micromanage you, but when you come back and be like, "Well, I, I got you this," I'll give you, I'll give you a fucking uh, a basic, low level <laughs> yeah. example, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and this, you know, this is uh, my my brother in law. One time, I sent him in and out for for get me some food. Yeah, right. Yeah, and I was like, "Look, it, this is what I want. I want this. I want this. I want this. Make sure you got grilled onions on this." Blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. blah. He comes back with a bag of grilled onions. <laughs> right so oh shut the fuck up yes i, I told yeah. i told him get me get me grilled onions and and spread <laughs> on the animal style fries oh, and i was like cool up, he dude. came in and he had like in his head it might have been too big of a task but in my head i thought yeah, you can seems, handle this it's manageable it's it's, 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 manageable. it's a manageable task yeah. but he came back and he had and i put the bag <laughs> on the on the on the fucking table and i was like I was just sitting there thinking, like, do you not know logic? Do you? Why the fuck are you bringing me a bag of grilled onions? Right? Yeah. No. Yeah, I get it. I so, get like, it. yeah, did he accomplish what I asked him? Yeah. Yeah, in a way. Yeah, kind of. He didn't forget the grilled onions. <laughs> they just came in a bag. <laughs> but I, I had sent him off, and I didn't call him and be like, hey, make sure you got on the yeah, burger. Like, <laughs> Don't make make sure you get the grilled onions on the burger. He he just came back with grilled onions. Oh my uh, god! And and that's what I'm saying. You don't think you need to say that, right? So that that goes to to sending someone off with the task. You go and you let them fail, and then when they come back, then you're like, well, now you understand. Yeah, you're like, oh, okay, this was above. You. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And speaking of which, one time, man, back in the day, um, way back, I go. Um, uh, this, I, when I was married, man, my my ex wife was like, "Hey, can you can you go get me some fucking uh, 
nachos at Baker's, right? She's like, all I want is 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 the meat and cheese on the fucking nachos, right? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I, you know. Um, <laughs> but you know, so it's just a pretty normal thing. I go, I go to, I go to Baker's. I ask him. I say, hey man, yeah, you know, like yeah, I want these nachos. I just want meat and cheese. Okay, whatever. Um, you know, and the lady at the drive thru is like, You just want that? And I'm like, Yeah. I think so. Yeah, no, that's it. Bro, I get home, there's no chips, dude. She didn't put chips. It's just meat and cheese. Just meat and cheese in the thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'm like, You fucking with me? You know what I mean? And like I and I didn't look and I, you know, I grabbed my shit and I drove home and I give it to her. Because you thought there's no and way. She's like, Are you fucking with me? And I'm like, What? <laughs> What do you mean? Like, what are you talking about? Like, uh, meat and cheese, right? This is your wife. Like, this is yeah. your ex-wife. Yeah. <clears throat> She's like, yeah, it's only fucking meat and cheese. I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah, that's what you said, right? You're like, But that's... I look and I was like, these motherfuckers, dude. Like, you fucking piece of shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wanted chips. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah. who? I said nachos, dude. You know what I mean? But I just thought like, yeah, you know what? Like, I should have really... I didn't say and chips. Yeah. You know what I mean? I thought it was implied. It's nachos. It's nachos. You know what I mean? And you know what? Yeah. You know what fucked up my brother in law? I asked, I, I got the <laughs> meal. I wanted animal style fries on the side. So when I said, oh, give me animal so style wanted, on the, on the you want, side. You want the fries yes. and then animal fries on, on the, the side. side. Yeah. He came back with the grilled <laughs> onions on the side in a bag. He came back with a, sp- a couple spreads yeah. and, a, and, a, and a fry. Oh, my God. So not even an additional fry. No. It just, it just everything on the got. side. <laughs> everything on the side. But you know what? I will say that what what gets you better with dele- delegating work, mm-hmm. in my opinion, the way I approach it, there's three things that need to get done. I'll do one. Yeah. I'll do one, you do one, you do one. So that when we meet, my success is relying on off your step. Yeah. So so you ease people into delegation and into playing the part. Agreed. But but you also have to know your team. I think you have to understand who you're working with. That's, right. That's what I'm and saying. So so the, and that's kind of where I was getting at earlier. And and you know like I I feel like man I'm lucky enough to have a pretty competent team in, yeah. in most things I do. But however man there have been people. <laughs> it makes me laugh because I'm thinking of just whatever there have been some people <laughs> who are like I'm like are you good? Oh yeah 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 I'm good. And then later on, they weren't good. I'm like, man, you weren't good at any of this shit. I'm not gonna ask you. All you have to be like, hey, how do you do this? And I'm like, got you, man. Let me. I'll sit here and train you. No, it's like training. I have a guy. He's good at training. You know what I mean? He's really good at training. So I, I give him, hey, knock this out. It looks good for him. It looks good. You know, the department looks good because, but. There's a level of comprehension, and people will bullshit you. Yeah. And okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? What are you going to do? It always comes back. But very interesting stuff, man. Very interesting. I'm glad we both had some some uh, fast food oh. shit. You're like, what the fuck are you thinking, dude? Like, what is this? I have never gotten my shit like that in a bag. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't know they would do that. Grilled onions right? in the bag. Yeah, dude. S- spread they're, in the bag. They're probably sitting inside like, uh, what? They're like, they're like, we can assemble this. <laughs> we'll do we it. We typically do. Yeah, we do. Put it together for you, dude. You know we could do that. You know? <laughs> you know? Like, nah. I like to knock my own yeah. shit out. <laughs> like, yeah, I'll do it when I get home. I'm more of a builder. I like to yeah, assemble you know, it myself. Uh, just the, the final touches is my my thing. <laughs> All right, man. I'm, okay. Um, and so with that one, though, it brings me to my next question, man. And so I want to know, what is one thing, if you could change about yourself today, what is that thing you would change? Oh, the, the one thing about myself that I would change, um, my stubbornness. Why? And that see that I just I like I don't know why you'd want to change it. I um, I can respect your stubbornness. Well, you know, because let me well before you answer that, I'll give you a little time to formulate your thought. And, and maybe I jumped on that one a little quickly, but because like your stubbornness motivates me. Yeah. If I come here to do this podcast and whatever I was supposed to have isn't isn't fucking ready, I'm like, and you're I know it. I could tell. I like. I think one of my qualities is I could kind of read people a lot of the time. Not always great, but a lot of the time, I can tell like. Ain't not in a good mood, and and I'm immediately like running through the list of, uh, did you fuck up? Maybe this is you, dude. And I'm like, yep, that sure did, sure did. You fucked up, dude. Um, I like, I'm okay, but like, because I know that, and I know like, like I said, that coupled with the fact that like, you you demand the best that you someone that that could be put in, especially when you're involved in it. 
Right? And so then seeing that and then knowing your stubbornness motivates me. Look at this table. You're like, nah, we're going to do it again. I'm like, eh, it's probably cool. No, it's not. All right, now nah, you're right. And I'm like, yeah. And instead of like looking at it like now we have a conflict, I'm like, no, who's right here? He is right. It can be better. Let's fucking aim for that. Okay, so beast, your stubbornness, I would say, is probably a fucking asset. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, it, and if if you, especially, we're talking about delegating things. So if you now, I know if James offered me, gave me a task to go do, I'm like, oh no, what is the job? You fucking got it, dude. Like, and I'm coming back, and you. It was shit on the fucking bag of onions. <laughs> okay, I'm like, what did you? Do so you want that? They would have gave me out a stop right there. Like, hey, what the fuck is this? Nah, dude, I'd I'd be talking shit to them. <laughs> you know what, I mean? <laughs> like, what is this? Serenity? What the fuck you doing? What are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. So these are the things I. So I get what you mean, oh, but man. I would disagree with that a hundred percent. You know, there, there's, and and I hate saying this. There's, I, at the age I'm at now, there's not much like. I have, in my head, I have become the man that I've always wanted you to are, be. You're okay with you. You know what I mean? Like I, there, there's just, and and I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm a bad person at all. Well, I, I've done bad things, but what I'm saying is like, I, I don't, I don't think that when I look at who I am and how I interact with people and how I navigate my career, I don't think I, I mean. Those are the measurements, right? Like you measure yourself with your family, you measure yourself in your workplace. Outside of that, you measure yourself with friends. But really, I have slowly become the man that I want to be at 30, 31. Right. You know, so it's like when I look at the one thing that well, the question is one thing I that I that I you would change about yourself. That I would change about myself. I think the one thing that I would change about myself is the stubbornness. And maybe not in the sense of my expectations, but I will say that sometimes my stubbornness holds me back in a way where I don't want to say I don't let shit go, but like if you're okay with it, I'm okay with it. Yeah. You know, so it's yeah. like that 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 to me, I wish I was more forgiving in ways that I want to be. You know, cause for me, yeah. like if 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 one day you're like, you know what, fuck you, I'd be like, okay. Yeah, I get then that. fuck you too. Yeah, I get that. You know, like yeah. my stubbornness would would allow me well, to live there. I and I, I, very similar to that, James. Very similar. If it's take me and Anthony, it was fuck you, it was fuck you, and it was that for a fucking long time, right? And then, however, though, I think in you, I think you can relate. I think if I do, if however our paths do come across, and then we discuss it, I'm opening, I'm open to hearing it, and I think you would be as well, right? And so. So again, I think you're stubborn's not that you're you're not sitting there like I don't give a fuck what you got to say. No, yeah. you're like, "Hey, if we if we're going to talk about it, and we're going to address it and we can do it face on like you said. It's it the ball's in your court." Right. If you say fuck me, fuck you. All right? I can live with that. People have people I I actually valued have been like, "Hey, fuck you." Not in so many words, but nonetheless, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm like, "I'll live with that." It's probably my fault and a lot of them, you know what I mean? But I don't think you have that same issue. I will I will know it's my fault, and, and maybe that's how they are with me, because I'll know it's my fault and be like, I can live with it. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, All right. But it depends on who it was. I right. think I think we've had some shit before, and I was like, no, I fucked up. But I value high, at a higher rate than I think I value other individuals, right? Do, do you think that my expectations being very strict are are something that, can improve how, how do you mean like like do you think having too firm expect too firm of an expectation hurts me no because i'll tell you this right now if i sent you and this is this is how my mind works yeah if i send you inside to go grab a flash drive off mm -hmm. my desk mm -hmm. in my head i already know from the minute you get up and you shut that door how long it should take you to get right back here sure and when you're not back here at that time well, I, I, in my mind, I'm thinking like, "What the fuck? I'm about to go in there." Yeah, but see, okay, here's here's me though, right? But, but so, they, that that starts from my expectation. No, and, of and, task. and like, see, but so and this is how I immediately think of it. Like, sure, I know your expectation of the task, and I understand. So if I didn't make it back in time, I'd walk out here and be like, and not not even think that you were timing me, but I would walk out here and be like, 
hey, dude, I'm walking in there, and this motherfucker's asking me this and this, and then I had to piss, you know what I mean? Whatever the fuck it may be, but I'd already know, like, you know what I mean? Like, it, this just took me five minutes. It's a 30-second fucking walk. It's a 30-second you know I mean? task. <laughs> so I'd understand that already, and I'd understand, hey, I get where I'm coming from, and if I failed at it, I'd be the first to acknowledge it. Yeah. So I wouldn't be upset with you for fucking even wondering, you know what I mean? Yeah. I would totally expect, hey, and that's not just because it's you. That's just... I think in fucking general, like, yeah, it's fair to wonder, like, hey, dude, what the, was that mine? Are you, are you sandbagging some bitch, dog? I don't think you're gonna have it. Oh, whatever, dude. I was getting there. I don't know. <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Mind read? Now, that's that's one of my weaknesses, too. I mind read. <laughs> yeah, dude. So your expectations are too yeah. high, hey, dude, because I'm, I'm not drinking fast enough. But I, I do, I do want to just, again, <laughs> the disclaimer is this I have worked hard for the past nine ten years to be a a good version of myself so right. when so when you ask me this question i will just say straight out it's hard for me to poke it i think poke like weaknesses in me that i would change because i spend so much of the past nine ten years improving on those improving on those like right. like i i want you like okay the one thing i would change is i wish i made time for for more yeah. And I don't really have time for more, but I wish I was better at that. But that's that's the only place I can look back into the last ten years and be like, "Damn, you could have, like, you should have fit shit together a little better." And maybe, and and maybe one of my weaknesses, and this sounds like a job interview, but I will say that yeah. I will say that <laughs> one of one of my greatest weaknesses is is that I dive head in and and I and I fill my day up. To the point where, like, that's okay, it. well, it, that's it. Like, that's yeah. my day. I already know how my day is going. I know how it's going to happen. So, like, I don't have many gaps in there. So, this is – so, I will say, again, I, I'm stubborn. I will say my expectations are very high sometimes. But I'm also, like, if you – like, for everybody who doesn't know me that well, you're like, oh, yeah, no, I, I've seen James, and he just – he's well, Yeah, they wouldn't know Right? This so, like, you. let's just say everybody at work. They're not yeah. going to know my level no, of, of, of expectation because I'll they, do it with you. Well, no, and well, if I'm not they failed, ask if of they you. failed, like okay, number one, I don't think I don't think you're giving hard task if you did. Right, and if they failed, I don't think you would even throw it in their fucking face. Right, and I, I will, think you would just be like, okay, right, and then I'll do it and fuck off. And I will and say, I'll never ask you again. Yeah, and I will say a lot of my expectations, to be honest with all of our listeners, they lie outside of my workplace yeah oh no yeah right so yeah. most of them like most of them are my personal life yeah because i understand the way w work goes well, I, which i think is encouraging i always i tell you that all the time i value that fact but now um because i like to make things about me so i'll make it about me i i asked myself these questions before i asked you and i'm sure you it's me of course i did <laughs> <laughs> so no but i i wondered what what would I change about myself? And for me, as I think we mentioned on here before, man, I I, uh, I self-deprecate myself. You know what I mean? So I, I tend to beat the shit out of myself. Um, and so the thing that I thought, hey, man, what, what was, if I had to pick one thing that I didn't like the most about me, I think that thing would have to simply be the fact that I tend to super overthink things. And and I think all the people closest to me understand that I I tend to do that, and um and, and like an example of this would be like hey uh, let's say like my boss hits me up and is like hey man you know like I gotta have I I gotta sit down I gotta talk to you immediately I'm like fuck I'm getting fired and then my mind goes what is everything I've done wrong what's everything I've done wrong or let's say somebody hits me up and is like hey I have a question for you. Like, you just send me a text, I have a question. I'm like, oh, shit. And my mind will go through 30 different scenarios of what I could have fucked up with before anything else. I'm I'm just, I instead of just like, oh, okay, yeah, what's up? I'm, I'm like, oh, what? What's going on? You know, um, I tend to overthink everything, which is, is, is like a gift and a curse. Because I think also, if you gave me a problem, I'm going to think of everything I can with it. See, the somebody once told me, like, I don't think you think things through. And I was like, <laughs> you don't know a fucking thing about me. Like, I I can't stop thinking about things. Like, I don't know how to. I can't turn it off. 
So I, I overthink them though. Oh, I see the bad and I, I've thought about that a million times, but then I also see like, well, what if it went this way? And then it becomes that risk reward uh, aspect of it. And then I got to judge that and, and juggle that, I guess sometimes. And sometimes you make the wrong decision, but fuck it, you keep going. Um, so that would be mine is, is the fact that I, and James, you know me well, I, I, I overthink all the time. Yeah. So, so let's, let's put a little twist on this real quick. What would you change about me? Uh, it's <laughs> interesting question. Very interesting. I'd like, I'm going to shoot it back to you. Yeah. Like no, no. Out. I mean, I'm going to tell you what I would change yeah, about you. Um, <laughs> we'll go into it. Let me you see. guys want to get to know us? We'll get into it. Yeah. This. You know, actually one of our listeners uh, told me today, like, Hey, I'd, I'd like to understand more about who you guys are. Yeah. And I didn't plan this at all, but wow, mm -hmm. I like the way it went. But what would I change about you? Um, I like your stubbornness, so I wouldn't change that. Um, I would change, okay, I told this is what I would do, and this is mainly for a personal fucking perspective, right? But you're, I told you last week, I said, man, you're a closed book, right? And and I think in a lot of aspects, it's not a bad thing. I, I get it, and I envy it in some aspects. But I think there's there's a mentality of being, I'm closed, I'm closed off, or I'll give you a few chapters, and here you go. You know, maybe you don't get to read the whole book, but here's chapters one through five. You know what I mean? And right. so I think, and like, I know you, but I think, I've, I think too, like I do shit like this. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. so my personality, I think blends well with your personality. And I think, I, I think I, I'd imagine there's a le level of comfort, comfortability in which you will talk to, to me about some things, but even me, I feel like, and which is fine. I, I, I don't think it's a bad thing, but. I guess from my own personal world, like I'm like, yeah, what? I'll tell you all kinds of shit. <laughs> like, fucking, let me in. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. I guess that's on, on short notice. I think that's what I would. That's where I would go. You want me not, not to be such a closed book? Yeah, you know, and I don't mind. Like, there's some things that are for you. You right, know what I mean? That right. that should stay in there. And I get that. Like, I we talked last week after this shit, man. I told you some things about me that I I don't. I'm very open. I'm very willing to talk. But I told you some shit that like I don't tell people. And um, I remember thinking too, like the next day, and I was like, I "Fucking told James that." <laughs> All right, I'm trying to remember what it was now. Yeah, good. Don't. <laughs> I'm fine with it. Uh, no, I told you about my aunt and my grandma and oh, all that's that. Right, that's yeah, right. and I was like, "Yeah, I, I don't care. I'm okay with you knowing about it, but I don't tell everyone that." Right, right. You know, I don't tell everyone. The feelings that that shit makes me feel. Well, we dove into the deep end on the last episode, yeah, which I liked. End, I enjoyed end, yeah. it, and I guess that's where this is coming from. Right. It's like, man, it was really interesting to get. To, and, and if you don't, only James and Anthony don't know this. Is a lot of times I'm like, are you guys spies? Are you guys just getting me to say <laughs> shit? Like, and I, I do. I'm very. I told you I'm an overthinker, but that would be the one, man. That would yeah. be it for me. It's just sometimes, and I think that there's been times that we've been very open about certain aspects of things. You know, and I and and I guess for me, I guess as much as I don't want to say this, I think I get a lot of reassurance from understanding that other people have the similar problems, right? Which I think, on a larger scale, I think it's good for society in a whole is to understand like you're never the only one, right. you never are, right? And I think a lot of people do think that it's no matter how fucked up something is, and I won't dive in. I can I I could think of things, but like. Seems fucked up and insensitive to dive into things that people have gone through, but you're not the only one. Right. Like I say this, man. I was uh, I went out with a couple of my friends last night. We were talking about like these weird fetishes. I'm like, there's not one guy out there that's like, yeah, I really get turned on by getting kicked in the balls. Nah, there's a whole world of people that like that <laughs> shit. You yeah. know, like you're not alone. And how even how <laughs> obscure that is. Is you're not the only one, right? You know, right? <laughs> it's like you kind of think so, but, yeah. You know, but they're not. You yeah. know, there's a community of you're not alone, <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, <laughs> fucking, fucking baffles me, but yeah. hey, you know, whatever. Tweets their own, <laughs> and so yeah, that I guess that's my answer. Yeah. So okay. Now, okay. So, so the the one thing I would change about you, you know, I think that when when you've spent the the greater part of your actual career, right? Which I think we've done. Yeah, we've done. We've done. And me and Ken have always been. We've always progressed together. When I got hired, he got hired. Right. When we started, he was a few months back, but he was there. Um. 
when you look at how things have gone, when people had brought his name up before it really started going, I was like, yeah, Ken's the guy. Ken's your guy. Because I knew, for me, it's always been, it's never been a race. But it's always Same. it's always just been like, that's the guy. That's that's the one guy. If you're not talking about me, you're talking about Ken. And and it's always been that. And I've always known that in, in this career that we're in now. And I've always... I've always enjoyed that. I've always enjoyed having that connection and that progression with someone. Cause it's not, you don't gotta be mad about everything that happens at your workplace. You know, no, as, yeah. pe as people progress, you gotta be, you gotta be ready for that. You gotta be happy about that. Some people. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, um, me, so we've always progressed together and I, and I'll just say this. I've never been, I've always been impressed by what you've done. Okay. I've always been impressed by the way that you've you've come in and you've you've seen things and you've improved on things. You you took it upon yourself to learn. You've done like you were proactive in trying to strengthen yourself and and you always made a good choice. When it came down to the, the fucking the opportunity, you've always capitalized. And that's outside I want to say that's outside of financial because I don't think You've done it for you. You've done everything in your career for you. But I will say the one thing that I wish that I could change about you personally is that I wish that you shifted your eyes to something greater. I, I just, I know that. Like how? Not that I disagree. No, yeah. But just yeah, curious. well, I just, I just want to. The way that the way that you you tell me like like you got there's things that intrigue you. Hey, I want I want to do this. I want to start this kind of business. I want to do this. I want to learn how to do this. You're the kind of person that if I told you, hey Ken, tomorrow like if we worked, in, let's just say we worked in a brewery. Yeah, I figured that's what. Yeah. And and you were and you were you were the guy that was hungry. And I said, hey, look it, I'm gonna send I'm gonna send you on a trip to this brewery, uh, but gain everything you can. Learn all you can, and and it's gonna come with some schooling. You're all in, and you're gonna be great at it. I want you to start looking at opportunities that you can provide yourself, and focus your eyes on the things that you want. Because I think right now the age we're at and everything that goes into it, you got to start looking at what you want. And yeah. Um. So the one thing I would change about you is yeah. I think that your eyes are focused on your daily output and, and you want to be perfect and you want to, you want to perform and you want to be a pill. I always tell you you're a pillar and you are, you're a strong pillar, but I want you to understand that it's more, it's more than that. I'm a pillar in somebody else's house. I think. Right. And, right. And, and that's what I'm saying. Like you, I, I want you to look at yourself and the things that you want, understand that you will be just as strong in anything you choose. So I want you, if I, if I change anything about you, is that I would want you to wander. I would want your, your, your uh, efforts to wander. I would want you to, to, to get something that you want, grab it tight, and go for it. That's what I would change for you. Yeah. You know, James, I, I've, again, no argument. However, man, I would say that's just kind of scary, man. You know what I mean? Like, I think I think the reason why, and I, we've talked about this kind of thing before, and I'm aware, you know, like let's make it clear. Like I know, like you said, like I'm I am I'm I'm like a pillar in someone else's house. This house is like a mansion, so there's many pillars, right? And then you, after so so long, a pillar becomes irrelevant. Even if that whole wing fell, who cares? You know what I mean? Um, and I don't think that's my goal for myself. And so, again, when I hear things like that, these are the things that I think are, are right. And you mentioned the brewery because, as I said before, man, like if I could do anything, that that would probably be where I wanted to go. And I think I told you that. Yeah. And I mentioned earlier, I told you, uh, hey, I want to do something. And you were like, well, what are you doing to get there? And I'm pretty goddamn confident it was that. And nothing, not a thing, not one except drinking. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> Research. So, 
Yeah, R and D. You know what I mean? Well, no, no D, but just, just R. Know. I don't like the way that came out, but you know, oh. <laughs> yeah, got some D. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, though, man. But no, but sincerely, again, man. And this is what I mean. I think in life, man, you have to be open to hearing feedback. Yeah, I think that's absolutely accurate. You know, and um, a lot, a lot more philosophical than what mine would have been. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like what I said. Um, and so I, I guess just, uh, I appreciate you, man, and understanding and, and, and taking the time to even think those things, but very fair. I don't, you said like I, my goal has been me at work and it never really has. I I'm very team orientated. Yeah. No, I, I don't mean that it was you. I just mean that for you to be in your position, it requires you to be there for other people. That's well, just what right. your role. And, and, um, I think recently, even the last couple of years, I I was introduced to the philosophy of give them the pickle, you know, like yeah. which basically it's just, hey man, you're customer service based. You do what the customer needs, and dude, that's just exhausting. You know what I mean? Like, and and a lot of times I I don't think that's for the better good. I I get the philosophy, and I think in some aspects and some some um. Right, it, it, it that's not the word I want to say. I don't. In, in some industries, I think that is it, and and I think in the, even in ours currently, I think in a bigger picture, yes. However, I think in a smaller scale, you, I think it's beneficial. I I could see how it, I could see how it helps an individual if you take that on, but I don't think it's for the better good, the, the greater good of everyone. Well, if that well, makes sense. Well, if you want, if you want to talk about it on a grand scale. And you were talking about on a small scale, the one thing that always has to happen is you. There's always got to be a return, right? Yeah. So like, let's just say it's a restaurant. You you take what we do down to the form of a restaurant, which is where the book came, originated from. Right. Yeah. And what happens is you get return customers. You get their right. business. You get money back. In our industry, yes, it gets Whoa. you. It gets you. Uh, uh, people people right. can can count on it. I people think, can do yeah. this. They can expect it. But at a certain point. There well, has to still be that. Well, return. what what happens though is this, and same take a restaurant aspect, but then you get that Karen that comes in, <laughs> okay, God, right? I'm like Karen, don't don't yeah. understand that, like right? But and I'm glad that we can. Here we go, but now you get the Karen that comes in, and Karen's just sitting here fucking causing a scene, and you're like, do now now here comes the conflict. Do I stand still in my giving a pickle mentality, even though their the request is absolute bullshit, or what do you do? Yeah, right? right, and and I think, and if you give in to the Karen, oh, you're in a world of fucking trouble now because they're gonna keep now. Karens are popping out of everywhere, and everyone's kind of like, oh well, they'll do it. They'll, and now you're doing it, and yeah. you're taking everyone's shit, and your return because they're Karens is shit. It's nothing. They're writing terrible reviews, yeah. you know. Yelp, you're fucked, and yet you did it. Yeah, <laughs> but but now you're on Facebook because they recorded it, and yeah. You be as calm as can be. <laughs> it doesn't matter, and so that's where I think. And that, and that. But on a sincere note, man, I think I, I like the philosophy because I think it's good. I think it gets you to kind of really get to know. Like if if, if I had a brewery, I'd, I'd want to. I'd want to know my customers. I'd want to understand what do you what do you need. What am I not providing and all that. But you, I think you really have to understand who people are. It's like celebrities, man. It, if you read comments and you're a celebrity, I think you're fucking crazy, right? Because cause the only ones that are going to matter are the shitty ones, you know what I mean? And you're going to read it and then you're going to be like, oh, it's just similar to us. Like, oh, well, you need to do this. Or you guys need to provide more information on things or whatever it is. And, you know, fuck it, man. We are who we are. So if I change me and the, the core of what I am, then who the fuck am I? You know, I'm, right. I, I'm you. And that's not me. Right. So I'm good. But yeah, that's that's what I'll say about that. You know, fuck it, Karen. <laughs> you know, I don't give a shit. I fucking Karen. I learned at a young age, man. And, and you know, man. I, and shout out to my sister. I, I won't get into detail because it's gonna it'll be really bad. But my sister knows the first Karen that we met. You know what I mean? She knows. And I think at a young young age, we were both like, I'm good on this. I ain't gonna be like that, nah, <laughs> not not me. And I think both of us. It's funny. I was out with Kimber. The uh, Kimber was on the show, 
and and we were talking like hey so we're at this restaurant you know now they got the little fucking you got to scan the the thing on the table to get the menu it doesn't work and i was with her and her sister and they're like i was like oh it doesn't work like it's too faded you know they've been cleaning they clean the tables excessively i wouldn't say excessively but you know more than usual Freaking now man. yeah um at a higher rate <laughs> and uh so uh you can't scan it and and we're like i was like man normally i would not i wouldn't even want to raise a question yeah and i was like i got you guys like i'll do it you know yeah. <laughs> and we like teamed up on it too like we're like hey and we don't want to be rude but like i, I can't scan this i'm trying to see the whole menu you know <laughs> <laughs> And so I thought, you know, like, I like being around people that understand that, you know, like, I'm not trying to be a dick at all. And, and, and I mean, like, and I know Kimber and, you know, come on, she's one of the fucking nicest people I know. And my sister is too. And so I, I get it, but like, I'm usually like, I don't, if, if I ordered something and you didn't bring it right, there's a, unless it was like a bag of onions on the side, then I might be like, what the fuck is this, you know? But, but you know, if it was in the ballpark, I'm like, fuck it, I'll eat it. You yeah, know me, what I mean? Me too, me too. Yeah. yeah. And so I always wonder, like, how do these people become, like, to the point where they're so entitled and so, just feel like so, you have this right to just fucking degrade somebody and, and go so deep into something. And I, 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 don't, I don't really ever want to understand it. I don't. Yeah. I just think this shit, dude. I know people like that, but my personal world. And so, uh, yeah, yeah, bottom line is fuck Karens. Um, I think we can all agree on that. Um, but moving on, man. Next question I got for you. And this is one I think I go back and forth on a lot. Um, and I don't even know. We might have touched upon this at some point here before. But where do you see yourself or want to be? In five years, and this is the very end. These are very interview questions. The more I'm thinking, like, <laughs> yeah. geez, dude, this sounds like I am interviewing this, this is man the interview, for a job for sure. But no, but you know, and like, here's the difference. I think in a job interview, there's like scripted answers, right? Right, right. right. It's like, oh, you know what? I see myself in a position where like I can really broaden my my expertise or whatever. But this is like way more like you based. I don't give a shit about your professional aspects. Uh, as far as like in, in your current career path, you know, I just want to know when you think about you and I mean, personally, family wise, um, your goals, what, where do you, oh my God, this, oh, I thought you got it. I thought James just caught a fly in his hand, but no, we were, we were disappointed. Yeah, we were. <laughs> it looked like he did. That's James. He's influential. <laughs> but, uh, but where do you, where do you see yourself? And then, and then. How do you get there? I'm just making a little more of a, a deeper question. Yeah. How do you get to the, those get little points? Okay, I, I will say that in 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 five years, I do see myself married with children. <laughs> well, yeah, right. So, an additional kid is that what you're saying? I, I see myself married to my girl now. Oh, uh, shout out Crystal! Shout out Crystal! I see myself married to her. I see myself with two more children. Okay, that that brings it to a total of three children. Um, homeowner. Yeah, that was a big one. A homeowner for sure, uh, with the goddamn pool, because California's fucking, getting hotter. Fucking Anthony, you lucky son of a bitch. son of a bitch. <laughs> He's still missing, guys, so if yeah. you guys have seen him, there's a hotline. We've really been worried. The yeah. fires and shit, I'm yeah. thinking, was he out there? I have no idea. I don't know if he volunteered. I doubt it, but... <laughs> he runs hot. He runs yeah. hot, so he's he not running there. away from it. Yeah. Air quality's not good, and COVID <laughs> attacks people who aren't good, so... Uh, it's crazy that we're dealing with all this shit, but, um, I do see myself homeowner, uh, two more, ki two more kids married to crystal in five years. Um, but career wise, career wise, I'm gearing up. I'm gearing up to take some risk. Yeah. And, uh, I, I will say that in five years, I, I, I hope to have, and maybe this is ambitious, but it's just me at this age I'm at. I'm ho I, there's three businesses in my head that I hope to have flourishing in, in five years. One of them will take place in about a year, probably less than that. And then there's probably two more, but I hope to have at least three that, that are going. And like you said, where, where, where do you sleep? I, I, I don't know. I lose sleep every night because of the, the ideas that I have, the, the shit I, I'm trying to figure out. I hope I hope to find people who can kind of guide me in that, but 
I will say in five years, I, w- I want to have at least a couple businesses going because if anybody's interested, I want to start a group of people. You know what's interesting? It's like, as soon as you said, I have three businesses, my responses would be like, how do I get in? Like, <laughs> if it's James doing it, he's just so, like, I think I'm I'm trying to pay you a compliment. It's just, I think if you're going to do it, I know it'll be, if it doesn't work out, it won't be because the effort and the, the mentality and everything wasn't there. It's yeah. sometimes shit just doesn't work out. Oh, you're and in so it. Therefore, you're yeah, in I'm like, hey, hey, uh, hey, you're, you're, I'm, I'm fucking in. No, <laughs> you know, yeah, you, you let me know. know. You're my boy. You're, and, you're, uh, you're in. You're, you're already in. Me, me, we talked about forming an LLC to not, not, and that's before we established this. You're, you're with me. I'm yeah. telling you, I'm telling you right now. And that's why I'm saying you got you got to set your sights on something else, because I'll tell you right now, everything that I have in my head, you're there with me. And like you know, it's interesting. We talked earlier, like you don't want to fall into something, and I don't. Like I, I'll work my ass off to get it. Yeah. But like, I think like sometimes I need a little push. Yeah. You know? Push me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> sometimes you need that. Sometimes you, know? you do need that. And so like, and I'm very. I, I'll let you finish, man. I do, I tend to do that. You go ahead. No, no, and I just, for me, I I just, I want, like, I spent so much of my life going along, and right? and ho- and being a pillar for someone else. Yeah, I don't want to be that. I don't either. You know, I I want because because what what I know is that I know that I can be my own pillar. Yeah, I know that my friends you can, you can. are strong enough to to. To be a pillar, but not just for me. No, 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 no. Be, no I'll just be a pillar in your house. <laughs> no, no. But, but I'd rather be a pillar in your house. No, like but, I'd be okay with it. No, but the thing is, with me, with for for me, how it, how it always goes in my head, because obviously this <laughs> hypothetical. For me, I always want people to get paid well. I don't doubt that. You know, like I always want people because that's my goal. My goal is to be paid well. Yeah. You know, but I, so like in five years, I I want to be married. Probably way sooner than that, but I want to have two more what? kids. I want to have a couple businesses going. You want to own a home. I want to own a home. I want to wake up. You want to be your own man. I want to schedule my own day. That's that. Yeah. My goal in five years, if I'm not waking up and be like, what did I schedule today? Yeah. Oh, I, I don't got to be nowhere till noon? Well, let me no. go do some shit. Let me hit the gym. Let me hit the gym. And let me go see if Anthony's still working. <laughs> Maybe he can go golf. If he, wherever he you know is. What I mean? Yeah. Like let's meet Ken at the at the nineteenth hole. Like, no, like me, me. yeah, you know, <laughs> you, know you know where I'll be. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like you guys go ahead. Dude. You know, like I I, I really chasing shit. I really in, in the next year want to start escaping that that corporate world. And that's just me. Um, but in the next five years, that's what I want to be. I, but the, the most the most important thing is I want my my daughter to watch me. I want her to watch me. Yeah. take some risks because I think, like you said earlier. It's scary. Yeah. I want her. I want, I want, by the time she's old enough, I want her to have no fear of taking a jump. And not because she's got financial, financial backing, but I want her to not have the fear because what other fears can she create for herself that weren't there? They'll be there. Right. It's like if you're, if your dad, if your dad was a business owner or my dad was a business owner, we wouldn't have a fear of starting a business. Yeah, we would, we would we would we would our our shortcomings will come of, of running a successful business. Right. So I want her, I want that's what I want to give my daughter in, in a couple of years is to give her the idea of like oh you just got to start it and you got to start it smart. And you know, mentioning that man, it's it's something that's interesting to me because like I used to talk, my dad would always be like, man, you better you better stick at this company, man. You know, like you got to do that, like this. My grandpa too. This is where you're at, and I and I first I was like. I think I told a story about how he got me. Like he, he kind of had an issue at work, and he was like, "Yeah, this is what you do," and it worked out. So I, I value his opinion greatly. That's However, life experience, yeah. right? But I think he values mine as well. And so I one day I go back and I was like, "Listen, you gotta understand, man. Like one bad thing happens, this whole shit goes down. That that's the world I'm in. It's you know, it's, it's I'm betting. I'm basic throwing, rolling the dice, mm-hmm. and I'm telling him that, and um." You know, he's kind of like, so he understood it. But the point I was making was just, um, you know, understanding, like, because he was in a job that was kind of like, hey, if I stay here, I'll get this and I'll get that done. And it's very secure. And I think seeing that, I know that. And I'm like, yeah, that's secure. Fuck that. You know what I mean? Like, if you don't, if you don't roll the dice, 
dude, how do you know? You know what I mean? Like, and I'm not a big gambler at all. I I can't live on one two three one two yeah. three Safe Street. Yeah, I I I and I never have really. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, look at what we're doing right now. I'm I'm constantly like, man, you know, like, fuck, I don't want to get too deep into it because that might not be good, but. But we take a, a certain amount of risk in doing what we're doing right now. Right. And I'm fuck it. You know what? Like literally, and everyone knows too. It's funny, man. One of the one of the gentlemen I work with is always like, "Yeah, I was fucked up today, but it's podcast day." And I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah, I know you're right." You know what I mean? Like I don't give a shit. Everything will be good. Um, and and the reward and I, like I'm constantly so I look at like someone like a Joe Rogan and I'm constantly like you know like or Willie that was here right and I'm like man the odds get stacked against you but what do you do and then, and then when you get up and do something look what you can do fuck it but if you don't try everything I think we've said has been that if you don't try then then, then you, you fucking failed you know what i mean like even if you were secure and safe you fucking failed man now you're looking out the window you're that old dude looking out the window like fuck look at that life looks cool out there do, do you ever do you ever cuz i do do you ever lay in bed and think like life is short like every you, day do you ever just feel every like day. you ever feel like like damn James, look man you know how and, i live my life and and why do we continue to live no no but fuck that Look how I live my life. Like, if, if a lot of people always call me out and talk shit. Oh, you know, you you're going out all the time. You're doing this and you're doing that. Because you know what, dude? For all I fucking know, tomorrow I'm just die anyway. So, I, I I try I try to have I try to make myself have an enjoyable day every day. You know what I mean? And 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 I I will go through the strains of work and I will go through what it takes to, to be able to uh, finance that. I suppose, right? being a pillar in somebody else's house i will do that because that's ultimately what gives me the affords me the opportunity to kind of do something for myself but because i the main picture to me the big picture is i'm learning things i'm learning what it takes to do things and that's see and that's where i think james and myself can separate ourselves from a lot of people is I, I I yeah I work here I'll be your pillar for a while but that pillar ultimately will probably crumble because I will look like oh I could just build my own maybe not necessarily in in the same field I am now or whatever it is but I would say this I could absolutely tomorrow if I had the money purchase a warehouse and man and run that motherfucker tomorrow I I'm, I'm fully fucking confident I could do it I think there's a lot of legalities that I don't understand but that's why you hire people <laughs> you know what I mean yeah. that's what I, I'm not I wouldn't be I, I wouldn't be afraid of doing that right I know this I've done it for a long time you know what I mean so I think I could um but whatever but I'll jump into me in five years okay I'm single as fuck so I don't have. So I wouldn't say married necessarily, um, maybe. Well, what do you want in five years? I'd, I'd like to be in, in, in somewhat of a secure relationship. I would like that. I, it's funny, I was talking to my friend today, and she was like, um, do you want kids? And I kind of gave her the like, nah. She looked at me, she was like, gave me that face. Like, and I was like, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, like I do. I, I'm not going to fucking sit here and lie about it. Like I do. Um and you know i i do that because i don't now so i'm like oh he's like oh, i don't know i'm just trying to talk myself out of it because i don't know i'm fucking single and who the, how do you <laughs> who knows right you, you never you never know but i would like that i would like to have kids i'd like to be in in like a secure relationship i'd like to be i'd like to be with someone that was my fucking friend like and i had fun with and i enjoyed and we can enjoy because I think too. Uh, also, um, the same friend I was like, I made I made a bet with this girl today, and I said, "Hey, listen, I think both of us have all the potential in the world to make over a hundred thousand dollars in a year, to make six figures in a year." And she was like, "Yeah, I think so too." And I said, "All right," I said, "Let's make a bet, only in the <laughs> wow, let it go, but only in the aspect of it's motivation to get there." I think. You do, you don't, but you shoot too high. Fuck it. You know, and I'm not too far away from it. I mean, I am, but I'm not. You know what I mean? It's not insurmountable is what I'm trying to say. So I'd like to be, I'd like to have had an opportunity to put enough money away to try to do things that I want to do. For an example, I'd, I'd, my dream is to own my own brewery. That would be a, a, a reasonably successful brewery. 
And I think if I got the brewery, I can make it reasonably successful. As James alluded to earlier on himself, he's a people person. He can go and talk to anyone. And I think, personally, I think I take that to a different level. I think absolutely, that is where I thrive. Like, I'm like, fuck yeah, I'll go out and talk to everyone. I can do these things. I don't have any issues. And I know enough people to be influential. And I'll meet people who are also influential. You know what I mean? I just need to get in the door. But what have I done? And um, aside from that, I, homeowner is a great one. I would agree with that. But the biggest one I would say, man, for me is just I would have hoped that I would have gained more knowledge on on being a better person. Like, and it just sounds a little like James ish. I guess I'm saying it sounds, it sounds yeah. very profound. But like, no, but like I, 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 I realized lately that I I can hurt people that I never meant to. And I have, and I never meant to, right? It's just, sometimes I think I can see a bigger picture and I'm like, yeah, I have to do this now. I'm being cruel to be kind, you know what I mean? And um, I would hope in the future I can take myself and see that earlier on before it got to the point of having to do that. And um, I guess there you go. I, uh, fuck it i'm i'm a simple band bro like i don't want a whole lot i i don't i don't i'm not like oh man i gotta be a fucking millionaire nah man i don't ever need to i just want to be okay i'd like like i said so i'd like to be okay financially i'd like to continue to try to be a better person i'd like i'd like to be in a secure relationship in a sense of like hey i'm with someone that i feel like we're going somewhere and I'm not, I'm in no hurry. So let me make that clear. I'm in no hurry. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, at yeah, all. five years ain't that. Yeah. Well, five hurry. years, I think, is kind of aggressive, too. Like, it, looking at, it, like, I'm all, I'm alone as it's, fuck it's today. It's not aggressive. I have, I, because I, 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 I will shout out Anthony, who is missing at the moment. He came out of a bad relationship. I'm not talking about just relationship stuff, but I will say he came out of a bad relationship. And he met his wife, Erica, and he knew. And he worked out. Now he will own a home that I can never purchase soon. He's already owned a home. Yeah, no, he's owned he's owned yeah. a home. But, but I was he's saying a new home. What I'm saying is he, <laughs> yeah. he's in the market for a new home that yeah. that like it's just like you think five years is a long time and it's it's out there. But no, it's not. Well, and that goes back to the point of setting small goals to get to the big goal. Right. Which is kind of why I asked the question. Right. Because it's like, okay, identify these things. So all these things I want to do. And James, me and you both know, like, I and I, I will be very, very deluded about this because I think that's what I should do. But there's prospects for me in certain aspects. And, and I realized, like, st- stop being scared and go fucking shoot your shot. Like, stop this mentality of like, hey, well, this corporate world is the safe haven. And I, I have no immediate goals of leaving that at all. You know what I mean? But I'm only using that as an example because it's not what I'm referring to. But Jameson understands yeah. what I'm getting at. And it's like, okay, dude, you can sit here and be terrified and like, oh, the what ifs and me, the overthinker. Or you can just shut the fuck up. Stop over, overthink it if you want, but shoot your fucking shot. Because yeah. like, you <laughs> Until you do, you don't know. So you could try to think whatever you want, but what does it matter? What does it matter if you don't try? Oh, <laughs> they're too fast. James has been trying to kill flies all night, and he hasn't got one. <laughs> He's been pissing me off all but fucking again, night. Mr. Perfection, he won't quit. Like you know, I'm like just fuck it. Like, no, because in my head, the, the, the viewers of the YouTube channel are like. Damn, there's flies everywhere. There's, no, there's <laughs> two flies. Yeah, they're, they tag teamed us. It's just two. It looks like a lot, but it's two. Pretty soon we're going to get bukkake by flies. <laughs> <laughs> also, shout out to Jose. <laughs> anyway, man. But no, but that's my goals, I guess, in five years. And I think they're pretty reasonable goals. And I think, you know what, man? If I actually set small, and that's what I'm saying. So I've already set one small one for myself, and and I will I will pursue it. Um, and I'll, I will see what happens from there. If that's not it, then it doesn't work. Fuck it. Keep going. Yeah, exactly. No. At the end of the day, five years from now, like so what you said, it's not that long, but it is that long. Because if 
you try something today and then five years from now you're never gonna look back and be like oh man that was that was the worst uh, you know like even if it was if you keep going it's not you know what i mean it, like, it's, it's not it's not and nothing's insurmountable like you could get over anything and you yeah. keep going and every day you just keep fucking going yeah and so that's it and i will and <laughs> you know and all right so that's my five year that's my five year plan that's your five year plan and, and, I, and i like that i like i like that you have because the thing is like i don't i don't know if it's just me but like five year plans i i didn't learn about the shit growing up hey, so how like, many how many weeks out are we right now from um, airing what we're doing right now uh week and a half or two weeks never mind then all right can't do it two weeks out oh, what, what, what do you want to nah, do i can't do it it's too close what do you want to do? It's too close. <laughs> Can't back out. I'll tell you, you after. I to do some shit. Yeah, I would have said some shit. I would have said, "Hey, you know, like I know, but no, it's too close." Yeah, it's too close. Um, but you you don't really learn five year plans. Like, like I didn't. Well, when I the, didn't. Uh, our class doesn't. Our class doesn't. You like you don't learn five year plans. You don't learn what this is. But it's good when you when you get to a certain age. For me, it's age. For me, like. I could be, I'm the same person when I was in my 20s, but same. now that I'm 31, things just look a little different. And it's not time's running out. It's just that no, you it's, need it's, a plan. It's like, you know, people talk about like being in your prime, right? And I'm like, okay, if I'm an athlete, yeah, I'm probably there. That's not my game, right? right. My game is thinking. Well, you, well, take it back to Jose's episode. Yeah. Jose, talk, he's, he talked about going camping with his wife. Mm -hmm. and, and formulating what what do you want to save what do you want to buy what do that right there is yeah. amazing that that's that's the goal that, that's what th i mean that though. right there is like looking at a plan and going how are we can execute well and that's so so like i said in a secure relationship i need to, i need a partner who's 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 a fucking hustler you know what i mean like like and we can both be like all right this is what we're gonna do it's funny and this is gonna sound a little weird but i don't give a shit i'm gonna say it anyway so i go i was talking to jose today and i was like hey man if you're a girl, would you date me? <laughs> and I was like, he's like, I tear that ass up. And I gave him the disclaimer first. Like, like, oh, it's this, this is gonna be a little odd conversation here. But he was like, I'm gonna be honest with you. If I wanted to party and shit, yeah. But if I was really trying to do something, no. And I was like, and I walked away. And I went in my office and I was like, this motherfucker talking. You start jerking off. No, but <laughs> I was like, man, Jose, OnlyFans coming soon, you know? <laughs> no, but I thought about it and I was like, you know what? And I go back and I tell him, I said, look, I think what I've tried to do is I tried to get what I've got. I've, I've dated chicks that were like, I mean, fucking people know me at work. So I was like, hey, you know, like I've dated chicks that were like way on one extreme. And then I was like, oh, no, that, I'm going to go way on the other extreme. And then they didn't know me, so I went way in the, like, conservative and, like, I have my shit together vibe. And I was like, oh, that's great. But then I just felt the whole time, like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to ruin your fucking life. And and I've realized, like, I need, to, I, I think, I, what I think at least at the current state is, like, I need to just try to fucking know someone who understands similar lifestyle. So, because, like... Let me say it like this. Like I was I was dating a chick at one point and I was like, Oh man, like fuck. I felt like, oh, I drink too much. It was probably just me. Because she didn't drink really at all. You know what I mean? But I'm like, oh, that's too much for you. You're probably pissed off. And it's me building up in my head. I need someone where I'm like or my thought is like I should be with someone who's a little more like similar and understands it's like, yeah, you know. Let's get fucking ratchet sometimes. Let's kill half a bottle. Who cares? <laughs> you know, like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I'm not mad at that. But just shit like that. And I, the, basically, the point I'm trying to make, and this got way, I got way too detailed and I shouldn't have, but um, <laughs> what I meant was just simply, man, you know, like I, I think the older I get, the more that I'm starting, I had to experience some things to get to a point where I understand, hey, you know what? This is probably more the route you should have been going the whole time, but you need to learn. You need. You to, oh, wow, fucking get off my phone! But you got it. You got to. Sometimes you got to go to this place to get to that place. You know what I'm saying? And I, that, I'm a firm believer in that in life. And I think everything that I want to do, I had to go through where I'm at. Currently, learn some things, gain some knowledge, get better at shit before I did. Otherwise, you would have just failed any fucking way. So you got to take the knowledge, you got to take the opportunities, you got to take that, and then you got to make the most of it. And then. And that's kind of where I'm at with that. And I think I'm in a good place to do that. Like you mentioned earlier, like age comes with that. I think yeah, I'm at a does. good time where I've grown and started to understand that. 
This is the golden. This is the golden time right now. It's golden years, man. We're the golden girls, I guess. I'm Blanche. Stay gold, pony boy. Stay <laughs> <laughs> yeah. golden, pony boy. You know, but it, it really does come down to that. So, like for me, I understand my risk is now. Like my risk has to ha- happen now because I have a daughter. Yeah, and I, and I have a girl that I want to marry. Yeah. So my risk has to happen now. Well, well, you know what? Your risk is is a it's minimal. Kind well, of, in one aspect. No, it's not minimal it's, because in it, one it's my career. Yes, I do understand that. My my career, like I'm telling you right now, my career, I'm throwing it away. But also, I'm throwing it away. I'll say it on here. <laughs> no, I'll say it on here. I'll yeah. say it on here. I know the dedication. Yeah, I'm throwing it. I'm throwing it away. It. You know it. why? Because I'm betting on myself. It's like me and this beard. And if I don't, yeah. <laughs> well, no, I hope I hope it turns out better than the beard. But um, <laughs> hey, you know what? And I was at the DMV today, so I shaved my shit up. But I was trying to I was trying to race you a little bit. Yeah, well, to, well, you lose. I lost. <laughs> I lost. You know what, man? My beard's on point. I've gotten many compliments. Peep it. <laughs> It's better People, than mine. My dad was like, my dad was like, I go to my parents' house. I'll just tell you guys this. Fuck it. I go to my parents' house and they're like, you got a beard? And I was like, hell yeah. And they were like, it finally, it finally connected. And I was like, yeah. And they start laughing at me and shit. And they're like, oh, it's about time. Like, and then and I turned and he was like, look at that gap though. And I was like, you know what, dude? Like. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> I'm like, leave it alone. <laughs> and I had just left the barber, and I was like, "Yeah, man. my boy Willie hooked me up, you know." And then, he lined uh, you up? Yeah, yeah, he did. He didn't say shit. It's been about a week, so you know, don't be too critical. <laughs> but um, but yeah, man, my dad was just kind of like, "Good job, man. It's about time." You yeah. know what are you? Thirty three? It's a fuck you, mental <laughs> You know, and I was like, "Dude, I've never seen you with one my whole life." Can he grow a beard? I don't know. They tell but, me no, he can. Do, do you think he can? You know someone can grow a beard. You see him like, oh, you got to shave. He's like can a daily he? morning shaver, dude. Oh, he can grow a beard? I don't know. He's, if you got a he daily. Grew like, he grew like a, little, like a little this part. You know what I mean? And I was like, all right. Oh, you just mean he shaves daily? Yeah. I mean, that's what he told me. But I'm like, I don't know if I believe you, man. Like, I've never seen like, you know, like. Imagine if your like, dad can grow a beard. Certain people miss like one day and you're like, oh, yeah. Oh, you got it. Oh, yeah. No, no, I've never seen that. I've never felt that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, this is your fault, dude. Like, yeah. don't make fun of me. How dare you? I'm doing well. All right. Whatever, man. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah. Hey, but if you but if you need a cut. Go go see Willie. Go check out hey, Kicks hit, and Cuts. Hit my boy Kicks and Cuts. What we'll pass yeah, Willie? Go check out Willie for sure. Go yeah. go support him. You know why? Yeah. He came through. He did his thing. He's a lifelong friend of Ken. Yeah. And yeah, I, man, that's I, my I want to give him a fucking shout out for that. Go go check yeah. his shit out. Like, I, yeah. Legit. I, that's my boy, dude. He'll make you tacos too. Oh, hey, yeah. Hey, you know what I mean? He'll make you tacos. Tacos Negros. Shout out my boy's business. Hell Again, yeah. Again, so we over here talking about being scared. Yeah. That's what I'm saying, man. That's my what I'm boy, my boy jumped the fuck up. UFC, Tacos Negros, fucking barbershop. Hey, my, my man's in, in the game. You know what I mean? And he gets all the love from me for that. Go support him. And uh, I mean, I try to support him. I tip his ass all the fucking time. You know, like, <laughs> fucking one day I'm like, I need a free cut. He'll be like, nah, nah. <laughs> you it, know, don't, it don't work like that. Yeah, whoa. No, that, <laughs> that was your decision. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, Willie, I want a free one one day. Yeah, but go, no, go check out his shit. Uh, he does all kinds of stuff. Like, this guy's into everything. Yeah, man. He's a cool dude, too. Hey, last time I was there, he was like, about this massager, man. Like, uh, I saw that massager on yeah, his hand. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah on I his, saw that on too. his Instagram. He, he was, was doing like, it to me, and I was like, nope, don't like it. Nope. Nope. Knock it off. <laughs> he was like, why? And I was like, Willie, stop it. You were and then, hard. And then, and then, hold on, hold on. And then, and, then, <laughs> and then he's doing like, I hear this like little fan thing behind me, and I was like, what the fuck? And he's like spraying some shit on my head. And I was like, Oh, some like, lavender mist or what? I was like, hey, Willie. Hey, it's like, hey, what are you doing, dude? Like, what is that? He, he comes in my ear and he goes, shut up. Suck my dick. <laughs> I was like, I was like, what the fuck did you say? And yo, yo like, we're done. We're done. Yeah. And I was like, I was like, if I was anywhere else, I would fucking, I would bounce right now. And he's laughing. Dude, and, I'm laughing and I was, and then he's like, you want a massage? I'm like, no, dude. <laughs> what the fuck do you think? No, you freaked me out. I want to go home. Okay. I was like, I'm going to my dad's now. Yeah. Let me feel like a man again. 
fucking weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> so go to Willie, man. He'll tell you to suck his dick, and he'll fucking <laughs> you know, massage you all at the same time. It's weird. You know what I mean? I'm kidding. No, man. Uh, that's just special treatment that you get <laughs> your fucking friends. He's probably going to hate that I said any of that. I don't give a fuck. Whatever, man. No, everybody wants a massage nowadays. That's weird everybody to wants me. a massage nowadays. And my boy was telling me that he went somewhere and they were like, yeah, massaging. And he was like, hey, dude. And it, my boy said he was getting his beard done and the dude was like, you want the, you want the, you want the, the like the stencil? You want the crayon? And he was like, what? And dude just started like drawing on his face and shit. And I'm like, Willie, why don't you do that yet? I want a beard, dude. Okay, draw that shit in. He doesn't have, he doesn't have that color, Ken. <laughs> You don't have that color. <laughs> Nobody does. No, dude. it's a very mixed color. <laughs> it's a pastel. Hey, man, there's another market we could tap into. Yeah, we could. <laughs> yeah, but hey, man, there's like at least seven, six salmon of us out there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, dude? You got to fucking make one for us, too. Fuck, I'll pay extra. I've been paying extra anyway. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's get it done. Anyway, right, man. So you ready into the truth or what? Yeah. I mean, you, uh, fuck, I don't know. You got a truth? I, fuck, I'll come up with one, but I don't immediately. No, you know what? I do. I got a truth. I'll I go first. One. I'll go first. Okay, go I'll ahead. Go first. Well, last time you went first and it was a lot. And I don't know where you're going. No, mine's short. Okay. Mine's short. Because last time I was like, oh, I fucked this off. No, my, right. mine, mine's short. My, mine is this. Like, in, in 2020, everybody's so fucking scared of everything. Like, and yeah. and you may have been terrified at one point. Like, even if you're not a scary type of person, you got terrified. I, I'm just gonna say this: go back to it. Get back to life. Get get back to enjoying the the things about life that are good. I just want to encourage everybody everybody to be happy. Like, find the happiness in your day. Like, if you got family, if you got fucking kids, if you got anything going on, find happiness back in that and. And like go just I, I'm tired of hearing people like, oh, you know, life is fucking hard. But no, no, no. F get, find, yeah, get no, back. It you, is. You, you, and it, it is. is. And it is. But you have to get back to the shit that made you happy. Cause I, I was driving today and I was thinking like, damn, I just got back from the DMV. And there's a lot of people who are like, like, you, you know, they're living a fucked of life. Right. Right. But I just want to say this. Like, I know that at some point in their day life's still okay i i came from that life life is still okay your life is okay my life's okay find some happiness enjoy your day-to-day -day. look i you, you gotta you gotta see everything that's in front of you and and you realize that like it's all you got so until this is the end you gotta find it so i i that's my it's it's short sweet be happy find some shit and if you're not happy then you just well then it's on you what are you doing? This is going to fall into mind, right? Um, mine's going to be very, very much like James, man. Uh, nobody controls you. You control yourself. Um, so if you're not happy, look at yourself. No no one else can make you happy. And the more that you ever rely on that, you're fucking up. You got the game backwards anyway. Um, and so with that, I, my, my thing is going to be my truth is you got to shoot your shot. You can sit there. You can be an overthinker like me. Or you could be, you could doubt yourself or whatever it is. Um, you could be scared, however you want to look at it. But if you don't shoot your shot, you will never be happy because you'll never get where you're trying to go because you never fucking tried. And and I think as everything we've said today, um, find the path of most resistance. Uh, a, if you're not aiming too high, you're aiming too low. Um, if you don't shoot your shot, then you fucking will never win the game. And that's 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 that that's my truth. As simple as that, and that's something I'm gonna take on myself. Short and sweet. There it is. I love it. I love it. Make sure you guys are going. A chode of a truth. A cho Yeah. It was, it was, <laughs> you know, I, I will say this. Um, we got we got people who are we know like at this point we know who are like devout followers. Our our religious right? podcast listeners, right? Are. Like we we, yeah. we know we know who they are, <laughs> and 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 that's amazing I, we've seen a lot of love this week shout out gilbert shout out ray shout out fucking carlo shout lewis, out lewis lewis shout out travis travis shout uh, out shout our, out that our former, one our former our former mentor <laughs> yeah dude. um so we got we got a lot of love this week but guys make sure you're go to the go to the instagram specifically and fucking 
send it. Yeah, I got send some comments. I got something, man. So I'm gonna post something. I was thinking about this today, and and I I'm, I'm gonna post like one of those question things and just ask. Give me a comment. Uh, give me give me a comment on what you a, a topic you'd like us to tackle. Let us know what you want to hear about, what you want to talk, what you would like us to talk about. Here's your opportunity. If if I mean you're investing your time anyway, and you're listening to these things. Tell me what you want to hear about or, you know what I mean, at least the subject, um, whatever that may be. And uh, and, and we will we will incorporate that into what we do. Um, I think, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I think fan involvement, or listener involvement, I should say. Maybe you're not a fan. Maybe you fucking hate us. You want us to fail. Either yeah. or. Don't give a shit. <laughs> um, I mean, I do give a shit. Who am I lying? I'm going to overthink the fuck out of it. <laughs> <laughs> But um, I think it, it makes it more interesting for the listener to get your perspective on it, especially those that like we don't hear from a lot. You know what I mean? Like I'd much rather I think and because my you know the people that that are constantly they're telling us all the time anyway. You know, so those of you out there who don't, um, you know, we're not constantly in contact with. Here's your opportunity. Like, hey, I'll give you an example. I've had somebody hit me up like, hey, you know, I was going through some shit and you guys didn't give a fuck. Here's your opportunity to tell, say, hey, you know what? I'd like to hear how you think about this. Okay. That, that, let's pose the question. It's, it's, we will be more, I think, more receptive to giving you a more thorough answer in that platform than we would any other fashion. So there, there, here's a great opportunity for us. You as the listener, us as the fucking speaker, I suppose podcaster well we we are the host of the show there you go that's you know what i mean we are. Like you're turning host. you're tuning in yeah like help us guide yeah. us a little yeah. bit yeah tell us what you want to hear about it and even if it's like hey are you guys this and i want to know why did you say that great i i don't think we again i don't think we're men who run away from shit we're men and means we ain't running away from men nothing and, and we get in the pocket so here we are and we ain't afraid of shit so shoot it yeah shoot it um you guys for sure go check out the the whiskey time segment beer, uh whiskey it was good it's a damn good one man it's a damn good whiskey um, how, how far we get through it about halfway about halfway and you know what i'm in the fucking pocket i'm in the pocket too and, and that is, is good. the goal and you know Life what comes next two things come next first um okay bye second we on the way to in and out man get ready for that shit <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> all right Oh, that's it? I think so. <laughs> I said bye. How are you going to change it up like that? I just fucking fuck him. I don't know. I'm not fucking, but I like, fuck it. Fuck it.